What's up guys? Oh, I knocked my, knocked my GoPro out the way. Uh-oh. What's going on? We are here for the first official U.S. Soil S18 review. Well, maybe I'm not the first, but uh, this is what y'all been waiting for. This is the official S18 review from me, Mickey, at EVX. Let's dive in, man. Coming alive. This is quite a machine. And you know, I wasn't someone for trail rides before, but I thought the trail people were silly. This really, it works. Yeah, we're here in beautiful Quiet Waters Park here in Deerfield Beach, Florida, which is the only mountain biking trail I could find to shoot this in. So I'm gonna show you this on the trail here, the little mountain biking trail to show you what the suspension can do. Uh, and I'll also show you street riding because you know, it's not just for trails, it's not just for jumps. And uh, you wanna know how it fares you know, when you don't need the suspension that well, how does it handle on a pothole, that kind of thing. Or just straight riding. So as a guy that's pretty obsessed with speed and going fast, who lives in an urban environment, the big burning question in my head is, why would anyone, and especially someone like me, spend my hard-earned money, $2,000 basically, on something that's about half the battery of what I'm normally used to at that price point, and about 10 to 15 miles per hour slower, doesn't have RGB lights, and doesn't have speakers. So, the next thing I want to talk about is the side design of this baby. So, with the help of, I think, Kuji, um, the design of this is very intriguing. They left a very open face, um, and a lot of people are calling it the Ducati of electric unicycles. I tend to agree with that. It is probably the sexiest wheel on the market. Uh, you might notice that there are some power pads here. Uh, fun fact, the side of this was hurting me because they are using some different sort of like lesser grade product on the side right now because it's a pre-production model so I was kind of getting a bruise up here but these are some power pads that a guy in Germany is making if you're curious I can send you a link somewhere just message me on Instagram or something anyways they're kind of a perfect fit for this so I've been using this and they're blocking the path right now but underneath this there's a very ergonomically shaped padding here that allows you to sort of get some lift if you're gonna do some bunny hops um, and also potentially I felt like this was gonna be good for like leaning to be quite honest, no no one's body's the same, and I felt like where these pads are, they're a little too far forward for me to really like lean into and grip for like an acceleration, like a power pad would allow for. I felt like I was gonna fall off the front. Um, maybe it'll work for you, but either way, I really appreciate the design, and I think that these pads will prove to be soft and nice for the ride, but might end up ripping up kind of easily. I mean, if you. <laughs> I've seen a few guys online who have this already and their pads look pretty ripped up. So but underneath this, there's just more padding here. And then on the side, if I can peel this back, there's a little opening here that allows you to get into the shock itself so that you can fill it with air. So right here we have this suspension, uh, which has two nozzles right here. There's one for the main chamber and the negative chamber. Then we have this switch right here, which is a lock, so you can completely lock out the suspension or do about halfway or back off. Obviously the negative sign is the lock not being on, the positive is it being on. Um, but I should say that the travel still exists a little bit when it lock is fully locked out. 
And you also have a red knob up in here, which is the rebound knob. So, or I guess you call it a wheel. So it's a red wheel that clicks, so you can hear it clicking. Um, all the way up here, it's labeled, but there's one fast, the other side is slow. But generally speaking, I think you want to leave it at the utter fastest it can be. And the last part of the puzzle is this little O-ring. This blue O-ring helps you gauge stuff, helps you set everything, it helps you sort of figure out how much you're using of your suspension. This is where you put the air in the main chamber. So I recommend you do your body weight worth here. Generally your body weight plus whatever gear you're riding with is what you want. So for me, I weigh about 170, 175 pounds. So I'll put in about 180. And then the negative chamber, which is down below, that one, there is a chart which I put in my other video that you can reference as to how you need to supply that. The negative here basically changes your shock from being linear to progressive, which is something you really want because it mimics a typical shock that's not air, but just an actual coil. And that's gonna be very important to you whether you're doing extreme jumps and big drop-offs or you're just doing a lot of bumpy roads. It's gonna make it a much more cushy experience. Okay, um, I didn't mean to interrupt the review here, but I felt like I really had to just be honest with you guys and I hope that I had developed a bit of a rapport with you that you can trust me and trust me to be honest, um, even when it might mean bad news. Two things have come to light. Number one, the shock that I was just about to really dive into a little bit further here, seems like they're not gonna be shipping with that shock. Um, they mentioned it had to do with supply chain issues, but um, it seems like they're probably gonna go with a lesser grade shock um, and not a higher grade shock, which to me is a big letdown. The shock they have on there is by no means an amazing suspension shock, but it works, it's been doing well, and you know the rest of this review stands with that shock on there. And look, it's an $80 shock. You can go out and buy it yourself. If you purchase this wheel and they ship it with a crappier shock, you can replace it with the one that I've been using. Or you can go full out and just get like a nice Fox or Rock Shocks um, suspension, whatever you wanna do. Just wanna let you know that it's looking like they're not gonna ship with the nice shock that's on there right now. So just putting it out there. And number two, um, there have been some quality control issues with these pre-production models they've sent out to myself and some others. Uh, we've brought up the issue to them and at first it seemed like they were on top of it and they really wanted to like assure us uh, that it would be fixed, but it's now come to my attention that, well, I, I'm not that confident anymore that they are going to fix them. Um, they might. I'm not saying yes or no, but I just want to put all the information out there for you guys. Um, I'm not trying to dog on anything. I think, like I said, the rest of this review stands and my feelings on this electric unicycle. So hopefully by the time this goes to production, they can fix everything that's sort of been a bit of an issue for us early testers for them. Um, and there'll be no issues on the back end and you guys will enjoy a fantastic unicycle. Um, but you know, again, I, I just had to put it out there and just be honest with you and tell you what I know. All right, let's go back to the review. Let's go, let's go. I feel like the build quality is pretty good. I think the shell should hold up pretty well in some sort of uh, off-road crash. On-road, I think I like the fact that it's sort of modular, that the pieces, the side pieces kind of could just pop off and you can probably replace them pretty easily. But they're not gonna be as good as, say, like the shell on my Nikola. That thing is kind of like a tank. Taking a look at the side here, um, there is a lot of dirt and dust that has gotten in here but I haven't really noticed it sort of like infecting the performance at all. I mean, this is an open wheel, so you're gonna see a lot of that, but I think that potentially it could be wiped down with a rag um, or like a Clorox wipe or something like that to sort of spiffen it up when you feel like it's getting a little dirty. A lot of people have been asking about the pedal height and the pedal clearance. Now, the pedal height on its own is actually really high. So, some people might find that weird if you're kind of a beginner, but for me, I found that really awesome and really reassuring that the pedal height is just naturally high because of the suspension. Um, and then the travel downward is what more people were concerned about. I have found no issue with the travel downward. I've been jumping off stuff in this little park here for the last few hours, and I haven't had any issues of it like snagging on the ground or anything like that. 
I think the pedal height has been no issue for me. The handle is set in right here. It's very ergonomically designed and very stylish. It feels very Apple-esque. But you push down on this button here and lift up and there is a full extension and a part extension here. So the part extension is gonna give you the handle so that you can lift it up if you're going up some stairs. Now the long extension obviously is meant for if you're going to trolley it around. But this is a really good ergonomic handle. The only issue I ran into personally, um, if you're not deliberate enough when you're putting it up and down, like if you get caught there like I just did, uh, and your lift sensor is on, it's gonna cut off the wheel right there and it's just really annoying. So just make sure when you're going up and down to be deliberate and making sure you're pushing that button all the way in. Otherwise, you'll be really annoyed. is everything so when people ask you know who haven't tasted so to speak they've only seen just tell them the ride is everything it feels smooth as butter man it's sort of like riding a nice 4x4 truck around town like it's not quite like a car the way that a regular unicycle feels but it's like a really nice SUV or truck getting up to speed is no big deal I can quickly just dive into going full full-on King Song with no problems. It doesn't feel like I'm on a suspension wheel, but when I need to bounce, it's there. You know I'm a heathen, still got some bones to break. So yes, the biggest issue I see with this wheel is you're sacrificing speed and range for the amenity of the suspension. You have to decide for yourself, is that something you can live with um, if you get this wheel like if you're someone who can have multiple wheels I think that you know that sacrifice is okay but if you're deciding on one wheel you really should decide if you're gonna need that extra range or that higher speed Burn it down to the Here are my final thoughts on this wheel. The Kingsong S18. The pros. The suspension, it works exactly as promised. It works great on the street. It works great on bumpy roads, like if you were on Pothole City, like New York, or in the UK, in London, wherever you are that has crappy roads, it's gonna do the job. If you're into jumping off of stuff, if you're into mobbing around town, this is the perfect wheel for that. You can finally tune the suspension to whatever terrain you're riding and I think you'll be very satisfied. So for all the guys who are the street racers, yes, it's not that fast. And that, to me, is a downfall. I wish that this technology could also fit enough battery to give me longer range and more importantly, a higher speed. Like if I can hit 40 miles an hour, like if this was an 1845 watt hour battery, that would be my dream. The open frame design, I think, is sort of in the middle. It, I don't think it's that bad. I, I would not take this in the rain. I know they say it's waterproof-ish, but I would not make it your rain wheel. So let me leave it with this. Not a lot of people have ridden this wheel. And when they say things to you like, why would you buy that thing? It's $2,000, the range is not that great, the speed is not that high, the battery is small. The ride is everything, whether you're on smooth terrain, bumpy terrain, bad streets in the city, urban environment, um, riding trails, or mobbing around town, or jumping off stuff here at a mountain bike park. It can handle all of those things, and you can finely tune the suspension to make it fit for all of that. So it delivers on its promise to be the smoothest ride around. It really has redefined the sport. So thank you so much for watching. Um, if you liked the video, give it a like. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe down below. I know a lot of you are liking the content and you haven't subscribed, so please do that because it'll let you know when I put up content for you. Um, I think that's everything. Oh, let me know in the comments down below. Do you think you're gonna buy this wheel? Do you think it's a piece of garbage? What do you think? Let me know. Uh, if you think it's garbage, tell me why you think that. If you think it's awesome, tell me why you think it's awesome. But I know if I can purchase this, I'll be doing that very soon. So thank you so much for watching and keep riding.